I, th I think that there's real value in discovery learning, and uh, the, the best example that, that I know of this, um, it may not be the best example, but it's the best one I know, is City Hall School. I don't know if any of you have had the opportunity to, to take a class to City Hall School or have Linda Hutt, who's, our, who's seconded from the public school board, to City Hall, and she's based out of a room, and there's a classroom. Uh, we get 25 or so uh, classes a year that come through and spend a full week at City Hall and they go to the journal and they learn about the media angle, they go to, they go to the mustard seed and they encounter homelessness and, and they, they make sandwiches and interact for and interact with homeless people. So they, you know, they go to the police headquarters and they, they go to a bus garage and, and they discover the complexity of what a city does. And I think this is phenomenal because whenever they added local government to the grade six curriculum, uh, the chances for civic democracy went way, way up. Because I didn't do it in school. I, I did this by accident, only because I played too much SimCity as a kid. That was my discovery <laughs> learning. I was interested in cities, right? Um, and I came to it by accident. But there's all these kids today, uh, and, and I remember visiting a grade six class and talking to them about local government when I was first running for council seven years ago. And uh, I, I actually get choked up talking about this, but there are kids from that class who I ran into in the last election who were 18 and who were voting for the first time. And part of the reason why is because they were captivated, not by my visit necessarily, but with what was going on at the city um, uh, back in grade six. So engage that curiosity early and nurture that citizenship instinct. The reason why grade six is so important is they haven't hit junior high yet. They're not cynical yet. <laughs> so they haven't turned into grumpy citizens. They're, they're genuinely curious citizens. And so feed that. And, and, uh, and there, there are opportunities to bring kids through uh, at other grades for half day trips and do a, model, a mock council and those kinds of things. So, if, if, so reach out to City Hall School because it's a phenomenal example. And we're trying to figure out how to scale it, actually, because I want every kid to have some of that experience in our city because I think it will strengthen our civic democracy over a generation. Uh, two would be um, um, storytelling. So while we don't need to memorize the dates of what happened in history, it's really important that we tell ourselves the stories about the triumphs and the mistakes that we've had historically so that we can learn from them. And so one of the competencies that I think is kind of between the lines here is one, becoming good <coughs> storytellers, and two, being able to interpret stories. And we're, we're, that's how we learned you know, from an evolutionary biological point of view, that's how we pass down knowledge. So we need to keep doing that. We need to figure out what that looks like in the 21st century. And sometimes it's making videos on your phones and beaming them to your friends around the world. But so the mediums have changed, but the art of storytelling is still absolutely integral to our learning and to our context for making complex decisions. So we can't lose track of storytelling. Um, I think lifelong learning plays into that, and, and so the story I'm reading right now is I'm reading that Abraham Lincoln biography that the movie's based on. And I'm going to forget all of the who and when details, but the salient stuff about what he did um, for leadership, that's the stuff I'm learning from. That's the story I'm, I'm listening to right now, and, and it's one that I'm going to be able to take and use in in my day-to-day -day work too. So I'm trying to model lifelong learning. And I think teachers have an opportunity to do that as well by talking about what it is that they're learning, uh, what it is you're reading, by getting a library card and going to the library and taking out free books from our public collection and or, or DVDs or CDs or video games or whatever and staying current and talking to, your, talking to your students about what you're doing to remain an active learner. And some of it's going to apply to your work in the classroom directly and some of it's just going to make you more interesting or better at Trivial Pursuit, but it's still worth doing. Um, the two other things I want to talk about though briefly are diversity and inclusion and um, and nurturing debate and, and on diversity and inclusion I think we've still got some work to do with uh, English language <coughs> learners from immigrant communities who deal with particularly from certain populations they deal with uh, racism still in our society and it's, it's sad but it's, it's, it's a fact uh, and I'm not sure we're, we're providing all the wraparound supports that kids and their families need to be as successful as they could be um, and that's not necessarily a classroom thing alone, that's a larger policy issue, but uh, with the influx of people we need here uh, to deal with the growth that we have and with people coming from all around the world, and Dennis is absolutely right about that intercultural learning, that ought to be strengthening us, but not if we're not equipping kids to be full participants, and I'm not sure we're doing that yet.